By popular demand in the comments section underneath the videos has to be the question, how do we change disc brake pads? And who am I to disagree? So today we're gonna to do just that. But before we go on, firstly, make sure you subscribe to the GCN Tech channel and also click that little notification icon so you get alerted with a bell each and every time we put a video live. Right, you've done it? Good, then let's continue. So it's time to replace your disc brake pads when the compound is worn down to less than one millimeter remaining on the actual backing plate there. You can use basically the springs that generally hold the two pads together as a bit of a guide because they are 0.5 of a millimeter. So you can imagine two times the width of that and that's gonna give you a general indication. You don't wanna run them any lower than that because if you're out on a very wet ride or a sandy ride, you could actually wear down a set of pads all the way to the backing plate, which is not only gonna give you a very irritating noise, but it's gonna give you badly performing braking and well, it's damn right dangerous to be perfectly honest. I have seen a cyclocross rider before now wear down a set of brand new pads in just one race. Admittedly, it was a pretty soft compound, so it did manage to wear down, but they can wear down at an alarmingly quick rate. The process of changing your disc brake pads is actually really simple and straightforward, but there are a couple of things which I'm just gonna pre-warn you about because it's not always straightforward for everybody out there because like anything on a bike, it's open to the elements and things can get affected by that. The first thing is actually a disc brake retaining pin here. Now these hold the pads in place inside of the caliper and prevent them from falling out when you brake or rattling away. And obviously it's in the firing line of a lot of road debris and gunk and water and everything it could well spray up there. And they're generally made out of quite lightweight material and not the, the hardest wearing, to be perfectly honest, especially if they get some galvanic corrosion when an electrolyte becomes present in there and uh, it almost forms like a cold weld, if you like, or seized in place. So then we've got a two and a half millimeter hex key in this case. This is just a demonstration one. This is one from SRAM. The Shimano ones now are using a little uh, flathead screwdriver, but there's all sorts of different ones out there. I think some of them use a Torx head and stuff. But before you go ahead, if you try and undo it and it's really troublesome and difficult, don't push it any further. The reason being, you're likely to round off the head and then you're gonna have to drill it out. Nobody wants to do that on a bike. I'm just gonna say that now. Uh, so what you could do is actually spray in a bit of penetrating fluid, first of all. Obviously, remove the wheel. That way you're not going to get it contaminated with any overspray or anything like that. Generally, your brake pads are knackered, so it doesn't matter if they get covered in it, but you don't want to go totally overboard. You want to aim for the thread so it can do its job and try and break that seal down, and then, of course, release it. And that should be enough to actually get that stubborn one out. Of course, if you've got one of the uh, split pin types that goes in there, you're laughing. You don't have to worry about anything like that. It should be nice and easy to remove. Sometimes you just have to straighten out those split pins and just give it a bit of a knock through with a hammer and maybe a, a nail or something like that. But we've got another thing actually to be really aware of here, and that is the actual pad type and shape. Now with rim brakes, Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Disc brakes are like derailleur hangers when it comes to replacement pads. There are so many different types and they vary from year to year. But fortunately for us these days, loads of manufacturers are making sure that one of these pads will fit on a different model in their range somewhere. So you're not at a total loss when you go hunting around for some. But like I said, going into a bike shop and just saying, please can I have some for my Shimano brakes or SRAM brakes or Campagnolo brakes? you're likely to get a mechanic or a shop assistant who's gonna say to you, which exact one. So if in doubt, take it along and at least they can get you a different model because there are aftermarket ones too. Uh, now generally, of course, you'd recommend using the, the Shimano for Shimano, SRAM for SRAM and etc. but they're, you know, they are available and I just thought I would mention that for you. And then of course, you've got organic, semi-metallic, fully metallic, and they offer various different properties when it comes to braking. Some are better in the wet, some are longer lasting etc etc it's never that quite straightforward but once you know what you're going to be using you're absolutely fine of course then you could also say that you can only use certain pads with certain rotors because of the way they've bedded in together but we're not going to go there today this is all about just changing these pads right let's do it then first of all we're going to remove the front wheel so just like ever just get it out nothing to nothing too special here to uh, stop and explain really once it's out, 
I would then advise to actually put on a pair of gloves like these. Now the reason we choose something like this is because of the dexterity that you can get whilst having them on your hands because, well, we are going to be dealing with some fairly small little parts there and you want to be able to handle them as good as possible and when you're handling them, Importantly, you don't want to get any of the natural oils or grease that actually comes from the palms of your hands. So despite how many times you wash them, it's still present and that can actually affect the disc brake rotor if you have to move the wheel at any point or anything, as well as well, keeping your hands nice and clean too. So in the case here of this Shimano Durace one, uh, it uses a flathead screwdriver. So I've got myself a little flathead screwdriver here. And then on the other side, there's this little circlip which goes into the groove on the actual retaining pin. So I'm gonna remove that one so you can see it came off nice and easily. It does help to have some sort of thin nose or long nose pliers to be able to do that. Make sure you don't drop it on the floor. If you do, like I just did, make sure you've got a black floor so it's nice and easy to find. So I'm just gonna pick that one up. Picked it up. <coughs> you can probably cut that bit out actually in the other edit. Right. And then it's just a case of undoing it. Now I know that this one's okay and I didn't need to put any penetrating fluid in there because I set up Ollie's bike for him, so I know it's fine. We'll just remove that. Keep it somewhere safe. Uh, generally, you do get a new uh, retaining bolt and also that little circlip when you buy a pair of pads, but some of the aftermarket ones don't come with them in always. I've actually got a pair of the aftermarket ones here to show you just to show the differences really between them. And then it's simply a case of squeezing together the pads normally and removing them. Now it does depend on what model of brake you've got because they do vary, but generally they tend to go um, kind of outwards from the hub when you actually need to fit them. And there they are. Now these ones, there's a bit of, probably a little bit of life still in them, just hold them up but not too much. Well, actually, there's, yeah, it'd be all right. It'd be all right for a couple of hundred more kilometers, I reckon. But we'll put some new ones in there anyway, just to give Ollie some more braking life, if you like. Now, these ones have actually got the, the cooling fins on there. So when he's hurtling down his local descent, the brake pads are gonna dissipate the heat just a little bit more efficiently. Now we've got them out, you wanna get something like a blunt tool of some sort. So maybe you could use a very thin cone spanner and use the rubber part of it if you've got a rubber handle on it. Or alternatively, a good old fashioned tire lever, like so. So now they're out, we will spin it around. You just wanna pop the actual pistons. Obviously you don't wanna pop them. You just wanna push them back inside of the caliper there so that when you put the new, um, the new pads in, they've actually got some room because of course they're thicker generally and the old ones that you've been taking out so they can still have the movement around the brake rotor itself. Just push those in. And make sure you don't use anything sharp and damage the, the actual pistons. I think sometimes they're ceramic you can do a bit of damage. You can see them in there. And I just nicely pop back in place. Now it's just a case of putting the new ones back in, but I'm actually gonna put the old ones back. I'm gonna show you though what the new ones look like, so don't worry about that. Um, something to point out though is you could in fact clean up the area as well with some disc brake cleaner, just spray it around there. Don't go too wild or anything. It's pretty powerful stuff and the uh, brake residue just drips off and then it self dries. It's quite amazing stuff, it evaporates really, really quickly. I'm not gonna do it though, Ollie can clean his own bike. I'm doing this for him for a start. Uh, but I'm gonna point out though, this here, it's like a metal spring. And these actually sit in between the pads. And the reason behind it, it's very, very thin. Like I said at the start, about half a millimeter in thickness. And what they do is they actually make sure that the pads spring back away from the rotors. You know, they help with that. Of course, the caliper is doing that job too, but these is like a secondary thing really, just to make sure that they do in fact retract away from the rotor. So I'll show you here, they sit around the actual pad itself. And then you can see it's really strong, really strongly formed uh, the forge or wherever they come from. But yeah, we will, I'll put the new ones in just to show it. 
but I will put these ones back in there. I like things to last as long as possible. So when you've got your fresh pads, generally these little metal springs, they don't come fully fitted. They are a bit of a tight fit. You slide them on and then you do the same with the other. Now, sometimes disc brake pads, they can be left and right specific. So the originals, they are, they've got L and R on them because the angles of the um, dissipating heat um, sort of bits on there, like, like a heat shrink, I guess you could say, in, electro in the electronics world, they're designed in such a way. But these ones, there's nothing on there that indicates what way. But you simply hold them together. It's, uh, Bit like holding chopsticks or something like that. That's the sort of thing you want to do. You want to imagine there's something in there and you want to squeeze them in and then you can almost let go, but make sure that everything's lined up before we go ahead and actually put the retaining pin back in. So of course you want to make sure that one of the essentials here, what I would do is actually use a little bit of grease or copper paste on them. Now that is actually gonna help prevent it from seizing up. So if there's a little thread on there, just put a very small amount and just put it around. You wanna make sure that that grease or copper uh, goes nowhere near the actual compound of the brake because if it does, you are in serious trouble. Well, basically the pads are rendered useless. I know some people out there say you can get a blowtorch or some sandpaper, that sort of thing. You, you can, it'd probably be all right, but I just wouldn't risk it really. The brakes are a pretty important thing on your bike. And then when it comes to actually tightening the, uh, the, the retaining pin back in place, sometimes they have a torque setting, but not always. So if there's a torque setting, obviously uh, listen to that and uh, take advice of it and use just that. But if there's not, you just wanna make sure that it's snugly done up against the actual body of the caliper. You'll know, you know, not to go too overboard. And then again, with your thin nose pliers, you want to grab the little circlip or the strange little clip here and just put that in place. It's easiest actually if you have it so that the uh, horizontal part is facing outwards from the actual caliper. It's easier just to grab onto. And then that is that. It's just a case then of refitting the wheel uh, and then giving the brake lever a few pumps. That way it's going to find its place against the rotor and it knows the distance and everything. They're quite clever in the way in which they think inside of it. Uh, you can't just go out though straight away and ride that bike down the road and hope you're going to get perfect braking. You will need to bed the, the disc brake pads into the rotors. So a few sudden uh, braking movements, not so sudden you go over the handlebars or anything, but you wanna go along uh, probably about between 10 and 15 miles an hour at first, and then like pull them pretty hard down to about walking pace, and then go again. Repeat that, say five times, and then do it again just a little bit quicker and they should be okay then. It's just to make sure that they've sort of taken the glaze off the top layer, if you like, of the actual pad and also that the rotor's okay. Of course, sometimes the rotor can be contaminated and that's a whole new kettle of fish really. You could clean them up with a little bit of uh, disc brake cleaner, but sometimes the best thing to do there is just put a new rotor on too. There we are, the wheel's back in place. Ollie can go out on a ride and tell me how the brakes perform. I must remind him to bed them in first. Only joking, I'll put the old ones back in there, really. Uh, right, let me know what you thought about this video down in the comment section below. And also, what videos would you like to see next? Get involved down there. And now, for two more great videos, how about checking out how to maintain your disc brakes? Click just down here. And also, disc brakes, hot or not? That's right, there was a very contentious subject about them in the GCN Tech Show a while ago. Click just down here. Don't forget also, check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com for a whole heap of goodies. And like I said at the start, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also click the little notification icon so you get alerted when we put videos live.